Let's get into it this morning and um, tell you the news, make it around from this part of the world. And we start off with the uh, not too good story about the Sun Eagles of Nigeria. Uh, will this finish? The, the Sun Eagles, uh, two time African champions, have ended their campaign at the FIFA B Soccer World Cup without a win. Uh, they lost to Portugal, lost to Oman. And in the early hours of today, lost scandalously 12 2 to Brazil. We'll talk more about that as the show progresses. Oh, too bad for the Sound Eagles. It's the end of the road. Actually, it's been the end of the road for them. Uh, yes, since, since after, after that game the second two. game, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and Brazil, uh, arguably the best team in the world. So, not a surprise at all uh, in that uh, last game in Group D. Also on the show, still this time around in the UEFA Champions League, there was a special comeback, literally, for Jose Mourinho and Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> they went down by two goals to nil against the Olympiakos of Greece. But goals from Sergio Rea, Dele Ali, Hurricane with two, ensured a special comeback. A winning debut for Jose Mourinho in the UEFA Champions League as the manager of Tottenham. Hotspur. All right, Jose was full of smiles, happy uh, with his boys. Uh, could have been disaster <laughs> right there in London. <laughs> but the, guy, the boys turned it around. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on and I'll also tell you about uh, this word. The Los Angeles uh, Clippers uh, extended their winning streak in the NBA to six after 114 to 99 victory uh, over the Dallas uh, Mavericks. It was on a night uh, that um, someone was able to hit pause on Luka Doncic. We'll yep. talk more about that on the show. Uh, a lot of people are already talking about the stifling defense that these guys have. Uh, of course, Ty is very eager to talk about all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's how we start the show. And that's how we start the show. And we saw it on full display yesterday, the stifling defense of the Los Angeles mm -hmm. Clippers. And that was uh, majorly responsible for uh, the outcome of that match between the Mavs and the Clips. Just two games were played in the NBA. We're going to give you the results now before we focus on our feature match. Um, two games, like I said, Clippers um, defeating the Dallas Mavericks, 114-99. Uh, to 99. That's a scoreline uh, for you. It ended up being a uh, very, very comfortable uh, victory. And the second match uh, was between the Wizards and the Denver Nuggets. That match ended 104 to 117. That's 117 in favor of Denver uh, over the Washington Wizards, who just could manage 104 points. In that particular game, Nikola Jokic had a season high 20 rebounds, while Jeremy Grant added a season best 20 points in that victory for the Nuggets. In our future game, the Clippers and the Mavericks. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's just uh, quickly get this out of the way. Uh, the Clippers um, been in great form. Mm -hmm. The Dallas Mavericks been in great form as well. So especially Luka Doncic, who has been on the road, mm -hmm. has been taking the Luka show uh, from uh, NBA Center. From place to place. Exactly. And he's been having a fantastic uh, game until he ran into the stifling defense of LA, led by Paul George and Kawhi. Leonard. In this particular game, LA controlled the game for nearly all 48 minutes. They actually took a 37, 34 to 27 lead after the first quarter before building a 64 to 46 halftime edge. LA led by as many as 24 in the second quarter en route to a 15 point win. Mm -hmm. And we talked about yep. the, the defense. Yeah. It wasn't full. Uh, full glare Before this game, of the watches yesterday. Luca was averaging 30 points of per course, game. Over 30. Yeah, over 30 points yeah. per game. And, and on the road. And this is the first time Paul George and um, Kawhi Leonard playing together on the road, by the way. And they were able to stifle. He just had, uh, I mean, talking about Luca, just had tw no, 22. Not 22 points. Not, you know, not, but it just shows how highly regarded this young lad uh, has, has become uh, mm. these days. And they were able to clamp down, just yeah. clamp down, stifle him as, as, as much as possible, uh, and able to get their sixth win uh, yeah. in, in the bag. And the support cast, too, they do too well. No, not, uh, not bad at all. Christos Posinges just had 15 points mm. uh, in, in, in that one. So The, the Clippers... Uh, not only stifled uh, Don Chich and 
are pausing is so the, 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 they played solid defense mm -hmm. on the old Dallas Overall, uh, yeah. teams. And uh, uh, if you look at uh, Dallas committing 20 turnovers, that's I mean, when you do that in a game, you're mm -hmm. as good as uh, yeah. your chances of losing uh, are very, very, high. very, very high. For Luka Doncic, uh, like I said, 22 points, eight rebounds and six assists, as well as three steals. But he made just four of 14 field goals when zero for eight from the three-point line. So they couldn't make a three-pointer out of eight mm -hmm. attempts and committed seven turnovers. So out of 20 turnovers for Dallas Mavericks, Doncic, so it was responsible for seven. Yeah, that's stifling defense for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to give all the credit to uh, the Clippers. And you have to understand why a lot of people feel they actually, uh, I you know, included, believe um, because of their defense, uh, they are the number one contenders uh, for me when it comes to the NBA title, not the Lakers. All right. Defense, Anyways, uh, across all sports, defense usually wins <laughs> you your title. So, uh, exactly. I, I, I can't disagree. Exactly. Can't disagree. All right. Then let's talk about our standout performance before we leave uh, the NBA. Not the greatest of numbers uh, you're going to be seeing today, uh, but still uh, decent enough to get on our top performer shortlist. Kawhi Leonard, number one, 26 points. Eight rebounds and four assists on the night for LA. His teammate wasn't far behind. Um, I call him his co star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other day I said um, I called LeBron sidekick. You didn't like it. So, yeah. a co star. Co -star. Mm -hmm. That's more apt. Paul George, 26 points, four rebounds and six steals. That's a lot in the game. Six I, steals. Much as I don't want to dwell on this, but the yeah. fans will be licking their lips. Of and course. This, I hope these guys don't get injured. I hope these guys just continue mm. uh, like this. We've not had much of them together. Just, imagine Just four games. Yes. Imagine the whole season, them together. Mm. Of course, they'll make the playoffs together. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. And uh, the more season uh, progresses, mm -hmm. uh, the more chemistry they'll, they'll build the uh, on court. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's, it's ominous uh, for... Uh, the likes of the Lakers and the Rockets and every other team out there aiming to win the NBA championship. Last but not the least is Will Barton of the Denver Nuggets. 17 points, 8 rebounds and 8 assists in that victory for Denver. All right, that's it for basketball at the NBA. Of course, I'll come back tomorrow. Many more games will be played tonight and early uh, tomorrow morning. I'll be bringing you all the updates that you need to know. Let's move on from the basketball mm -hmm. court now to the tennis. Yeah, table tennis actually. Didn't tennis have a court. Table. Table, tennis <laughs> <laughs> table tennis table. Yeah, right. let's move to table so, tennis. Uh, let's just talk about Aaron O'Kodri. Um, uh, is nah, okay. Is is gonna you know in a few days? I think two days. Then yeah. is is gonna be playing in the IDTF Men's World, World Cup. Cup. Courtesy of an injury to China's um, Wong, uh, mm. that's his name, Chun Wong. Uh, he's going to replace uh, the guy got injured, and and, and the ITT have said um, Wong pulled out. Uh, the, the competition is going to be held in China, by the way, right. but he pulled out after he sustained an ankle injury. By the way, Aaron Kodri has been a regular face in this competition. Of course, wasn't going to be here because it was outside the top uh, twenty. But uh, but as yeah, someone's uh, misfortune, <laughs> as, out as, as it turns out, he <laughs> stayed as a return yeah. uh, to the tournament. Uh, that's, it's going to be the 40th uh, edition. It's going to take place in Chengdu, yep. China. Um, the, it's it's, it's going to be Haruna's fifth appearance, right. uh, by, by the way. And so we'll see how far uh, he can go. Like I said, uh, he's been a regular face, and he is no stranger uh, to this event. Yeah. And, um, I this mean, event is know. for tennis elite, yeah. and it feels good to be talking about tennis elite and mm. having a Nigerian to talk about. Yeah, Arona has been has been carrying Nigerians and flying mm -hmm. Nigerians flag uh, for uh, the last few years now. When it comes to elite uh, table mm -hmm. tennis, uh, he's been mixing it uh, with the Chinese, yeah. uh, with the Koreans, uh, with the G Germans. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can name the best tip tennis players uh, from around the world, and Arona Kodri. Uh, he's always in the mix. Uh, so, much. so we wish him all the best uh, in this competition, which is going to start, which is going to serve off on uh, Friday and will end on Sunday, December the 1st. So that means by the time we we'll come back on Monday, we might be talking about Arnold Quadri as the Men's World Cup champion or whatever, whatever performance uh, he puts <laughs> up. We'll be letting you know on Monday. For Chon Wong, of course, I wish him speedy recovery, recovery. Mm -hmm. from... Table tennis, 
let's go to Karate. Combat sport. Yeah, yeah, I know you're a big fan of this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, anything combat. <laughs> 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 totally it, different from Cecilia, by the way. Yeah, yeah she's uh, not a fan. I, I'm a big fan. I don't participate, yeah. though. But, yeah. but I'm a big fan from the sidelines. <laughs> we're, we're talking karate on, on the show. Yep. Salah Sagara, the president of the Karate Federation of Nigeria, says that the sport is gaining momentum. Mm. Uh, and it's good to hear that you know, across board, we want to see all other sports develop. He says, look, karate now has a presence in 25 states across uh, the federation. Uh, I, I'd like to know the yardstick by which that measurement, they arrive at that measurement, but mm. it's good to know that karate is now present uh, in uh, the... And he also, we, we caught up with him, and he also talked about some of the giant strides uh, that the federation has recorded, yeah. including the strategic plan, uh, for karate uh, with its short and long-term objectives. And this is the way to go. Uh, I mean, you have to do things that will outlive you, that go beyond your tenure. So let's just uh, take a, sit down and listen to Silas Agara, the uh, president of the Karate Federation of Nigeria, highlighting some of the things they intend to do and the progress um, of the sport in the country. We are not there yet. I'm not happy where we are. When I came on board, or when we came on board, rather, karate was just existing on paper. There was nothing to show for it. There was no championship at the local level, at the home front. There is no championship anywhere that uh, our athletes were being featured, either at the international level. And so we had to start and encourage all board members to hold championship at the state level and to organize championship at the zonal level. And again, for the board to have championship at the national level. I'm happy that uh, we have that going. At the state level, we have championship. At the zonal level, we have board members organizing championship. At the national level, we're organizing championship. Uh, we, are, we just didn't stop there, but we have progressed beyond that. Uh, we have been able to feature at all international levels. Have been the last we featured, not just the all African games, the last edition of um, the UFAC tournament that was organized in uh, Botswana, we have our athletes there. And we're hoping to uh, attend the next edition that we hold in Bamako, in Mali. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, few days, we'll be in uh, Abidjan to participate in another round of uh, uh, where president will meet and address the fortunes of karate. And so, we are working towards that. We are not there yet. We'll be going to Morocco in February with our athletes. We're not there yet. But the constraint, which you know, is comes down to finances. There's no enablement for the board to move because of that challenge. So we have to look inwards, tax ourselves, ensure that uh, we sustain the game. But I must appreciate uh, the Honorable Minister, uh, uh, Honorable Sonde Dari, and the support of the PAMSEC uh, that keep encouraging us to push on. And uh, they have done a lot to give us that moral uh, support uh, to ensure that uh, we move on. And uh, we are doing what we can. And I want to assure you that uh, we want to occupy a place amongst the martial sports and give karate a new face among the martial sports. And that's our target.